I am so happy that you've all come to visit me here today at This Side Up, where we will be unboxing the most high-end toys and show you the most interesting things. Today, we're going to be reviewing the Finn Buildable figure by LEGO, another awesome hero from the Star Wars Force Awakens series. I really like this hero in the movie, it's going to be pretty cool to see us build this figure, and I already have Rey and Poe Dameron all set up, so, eh, you know, finish off the team. If you want to see me unboxing those figures, you'll find links to that in the description below. But today, my collection will continue to grow, and that's awesome. So, how about we jump right in? Friends, we are happy to hear from you about what toy you want us to unbox next. You can write your suggestions in the comments below, and we will do our absolute best to unbox your toy here on this side up as soon as we can. I've built a lot of Buildable figures, and I catch myself on the thought that I still don't really know how they first appeared. What were the first Buildable figures? So I found out that Bionicle's first incarnation had a series of sets using the Technic pieces, alongside ball and socket joints, and a variety of specialized parts to depict the masks and armor worn by the various characters in the series. And even the creatures, too. They came about in about 2001. The Technic theme is characterized by the creatures uh, and the presence of the bricks with axles, gears, and connector pegs, and a lot of other parts that you don't really see in typical LEGO sets. Technic is still currently an active theme, and is one of the longest lasting themes in all of LEGO history. In recent years, sets have begun to adapt a lot of the previous technically exclusive parts, particularly in their exclusives and Star Wars sets. Oh, my curiosity is satiated, for the moment. Only about halfway so, cause it looks like Finn is still inside of his box. If we take a look at it, we see Finn in full length, with a lightsaber and blaster in hand. The background picture recreates the moment in the woods when, little spoiler, Finn was fighting with Kylo Ren. He looks awesome. On the other side, there are some of this toy's characteristics. Finn's figure features a spring-loaded shooter with extra ammunition, a lightsaber, and even a wheel-activated swinging arm battle function. Woo! As far as I remember, Ray had the same function, but how about we open up the box and see if there are any other similarities? Okay, this time there are two packets and instructions. No stickers, tubes, or fabric. Only a packet with fittings, and a big packet with all the body parts and a headpiece, plus the instructions, which has the same picture on the front page as on the box. Many, many pages with pictures on it, which will help you build this figure, are also included. And in the end, a picture with all the figures from the series. Ooh, it seems that we've practically built all the good guys, but the dark side heroes will be next. <laughs> Ooh. And now, I'm opening up all the packets. Oh, oh no, one part is running away! Stop that stormtrooper! That's my piece! Give it back! Alright, we can move on. I want to check out Finn's head. Hmm, looks like it really captures the look of the character very well. And I like how the hair is made too. It looks pretty natural. So, looks like we've unpacked all the packets and we've taken a look at the head. So how about we start the most interesting part? Woohoo! Finn was a human male who served as the First Order Stormtrooper, designation FN2187. But that's not a very good name, so while he was on his first combat missions where he was regarded as being a very awesome Stormtrooper, he fled and turned against the First Order after being shocked by their cruelty. Having left the First Order, he took on the name Finn, a much better name as the suggestion of the resistance pilot Poe Dameron, based on his Stormtrooper designation, even though he really never had an actual given name. Despite his training and education by the First Order, Finn had a good heart and empathy for others. At his first battle, he even made a choice and decided that he would never kill for the First Order. His bravery in the face of overwhelming adversity is really why I enjoy this character. Plus he plays with a lightsaber. 
that's always cool. And I really want to start building him, so how about we begin? The way I build it seems to remind me of the way that we built the Ray figure. It seems that Phil Finn will also have one spinning hand, but why only one? Maybe two spinning hands are always going to be better. This is realized in the Jun Erso figure, and it works great. But okay, okay, don't panic. I hope that it all works pretty well and that I'll like it. Well, yeah, the mechanism is the same, and look how it works. Anyway, I love putting together all these different mechanisms. Every detail depends on the other, and they are moving and spinning in tandem. Awesome! Legs are ready. Now let's check all the joints. All right, they work pretty good. Now let's attach him to the body and build his hands. Whew, the whole body is ready. But still, Finn is without his head. But that's okay as we've seen with many others. The next step, according to the instructions, is to build his lightsaber and blaster. Oh, I couldn't wait for this part. I have one very interesting question, though. Why did Lego give the lightsaber to Finn? He really doesn't use it much in the film, and I think Rey should have gotten it instead, especially when it was Luke's in the first place. So let's check this wheel-activated arm swing battle function. It works pretty good. Finn can swing his lightsaber up and down, and you can really imitate a good slashing blow. The next weapon is a spring-loaded shooter with extra ammunition. It's ready, and we can finally put on the headpiece. Hooray! The Finn figure is all ready. I can say that on the wheel on Finn's back is pretty cool because it doesn't really stick out as much as it did on Ray's. So it doesn't detract from the overall finished model, as I said, like it does with Ray. Let's test this blaster. Finn's captain is in the crosshairs. Bang! A headshot. So, Finn is ready, and I can't wait to compare him with Ray. So you'll see that I was right. Ray has the same functions, but Finn's wheel is done a lot neater. <laughs> it's pretty funny to see them swinging their hands. And now, I have a question for all the Star Wars LEGO fans out there. My question is, why did LEGO give the lightsaber to Finn? I'm especially interested to read the opinions you have in the comments below, because really, there's no right or wrong answer here. <laughs> At last, it's time to rate this toy. First is safety, four points. The lightsaber's fine, but the spring-loaded shooter along with it makes for a dangerous mix. Second is quality, five points. I like the quality of this figure, and I like the proportions of everything too. Next, originality, only four points. We've really seen the same construction mechanisms in Ray's figure and some of the others, but it doesn't stop this design from being really cool. 
Christmas packaging, five points. I mean, the box is awesome. LEGO really does a great job when it comes to trying to market their products with just the first look. And finally, the price. On the official LEGO site, it costs about $25, while well, the rate buildable figure is a good bit cheaper. Hmm. But, dear friends, I really hope that you like this Star Wars LEGO buildable fin figure as much as I did. Whew, that was a mouthful. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'll be waiting for your questions, and remember to think about what toy you would like to see us unbox next. So, until then, we'll see you soon here at This Side Up. Bye-bye!